everyone, it's Jessica and I am excited because it's mystery envelope time. And for the month of April, I was actually the one to send out the mystery envelope to all of my friends. You can see here, this is what I included. Um, I have three by four pieces of paper from the Mixin paper collection from Close to My Heart. And I included one of each of the papers. I really love the mix-ins because they're gorgeous on their own, but I love that they coordinate with any of the paper collections in the catalog that they are from. So um, I thought that they were perfect for these photos that I have here of my niece's sweet 16 birthday party from not long ago. And so they just kind of worked. And then also I noticed that in my photos, my daughter was wearing a shirt that had like a mulberry color to it. And so I think I'm going to additionally use some of the papers from the Cosette paper pad, uh, which is fine because again, those mix and papers are meant to go along with any of the collections. Because I have so many photos, I'm also going to do a couple of flip flaps and I'm pretty sure I want to use this particular pattern piece here and then definitely my mulberry cardstock. So in my rules for this month's mystery envelope, I said that any neutral colored card stacks were fair game, um, any of them, as many as you wanted, um, but only one additional color of card stack outside of a neutral. So I'm gonna go with Mulberry. Um, I'm gonna use this embossing folder and my circle thin cuts, and then also that stamp of the month there with those cute little birds. So the last rule that I said was to try to use a product that is new to you that you haven't had a chance to play with yet. And I haven't played really with the stamp of the month yet. So that's going to be how I fit that rule in. Okay, I am working off of a pattern 13 in the Make It From Your Heart Volume 5 book. And it calls for a bunch of a two and a half inch circles. So I'm gonna cut all of my mix and papers into circles, as well as um, a couple of pieces of the Cosette paper. And then I am going to take this three by 12 piece of toffee cardstock and I'm going to um, emboss it. I have this wood grain embossing folder so all I need to do is turn the dial on my Close to Mary Heart um, die cutting machine to the embossing setting. And then I can also change the tension. So if I want it to be looser or tighter, um, I just really love, this is so much better than my old cuddle bug. I have so much more control over things, uh, especially of that dial where I can adjust the, the tension um, on everything. So I'm just gonna run this through here. And then of course my embossing folder is not 12 inches long. So all I'm gonna do is take this, now that I've done the first half of it, and I'm gonna slide it up through that slit that is in the middle of the two pieces of the folder until I get to the part of the cardstock that still needs some embossing and then I'm gonna send it back through. So it doesn't matter if your piece is longer than the folder, you just kind of send it through this way until you get everything done that you want to be embossed. All right, one of my favorite tricks to do when I dry emboss a piece of paper is actually to run a sanding tool over it um, and reveal that white core. It just kind of makes that, that embossed pattern pop so much more. So I have done that here and I love that wood grain. Um, and then as I was looking at it, I thought to myself, hmm, maybe I can make it look even more uh, wood grain-ish if I swipe my ink pad over the top of it and put a little bit of color back into it. And I just kind of did this on a whim. And when I was done with it, I mean, it did look cool, but it was not really the look that I was going for. I thought that, that the dark pieces just kind of stood out a little bit too much. So no problem. I just flipped my pieces of paper over and rather than using the embossed side, I'm going to use the deboss side. So I just went back through and kind of did the same thing that I did before, only just the other side of the paper. All right, I'm also going to ink distress the edges of all of my papers with a foam tool. Um, I used the mulberry ink color on all of my mulberry paper and then just black on every other piece. And then once I had all of my distressing done, I started to put things down onto my base pages. I did also take those circles and use my edge distressing tool just to very carefully carefully run around them and rough them up just a little bit. Uh, and then following that pattern, like I said, I'm just going to go ahead and adhere everything down to my pages so that I can start putting photos and circles and embellishments on. You can see I kind of just put the basics down. It's not entirely ready to go yet, but 
uh, the, the big pieces are down. All right, so I'm going to get this uh, set up here on my Versamat, bring in those circles. I've kind of played around a little bit with what order I want them to be in. I was trying to spread out the color and the light ones and the dark ones. And then I have so many photos. Um, I took a ton of pictures at her party. Um, it was just like a really fun time. And the kids were so excited for her because she was turning 16. Um, I'm going to have to bring in two of my 3 by 4 flip flaps in order to be able to fit all of these onto my layout. So I end up with 12 pictures, actually. Uh, the pattern that I'm following actually shows six 3 by 4 photos. But by in including two of the flip flaps, I'm actually adding four additional um, pictures. So that takes me up to 10. And then when I printed my photos, um, rather than just having them be three by four, on two of them, I used a pic collage app on my phone and I put two photos into one of the three by four spots. And I believe you'll see that at the end during the close ups. Um, so it ended up being 12 photos onto this double page layout. Now here you can see I'm putting my flip flap down and I do like to adhere it directly to my page. I was trying to get the photos lined up exactly where they were going to go so that I could uh, move that one to the right off out of the way once I went to stick things down. But I was just trying to use it as a guide as to the placement. But what I do is I just pull a little bit of that backing up um, so that I can kind of put everything where I want it to go hold it down and then just peel it off. I have found that to be the easiest way to adhere these. Later when I'm ready to put this into my book, I am just gonna cut a slit into my page protector, feed that little flap through and it will sit on the outside of my page. So here, I guess here you can see where I have printed two of those photos onto one of the three by four spots. So that's where I got my extra pictures from. And then this will be the one that kind of like flips up. I'll slide it in there and that is all set. So we have gone from six pictures all the way up to 12 by the time we get both pages done. So I'll go ahead and put my photos over here on the right hand side. Um, and then what I did, one of those um, mix in papers that I sent in the envelope, I did cut a circle out of it, but I decided not to use that circle because it was so light colored. It was kind of blending in with my white paper. So I decided to, um, I'm like, I'm not going to use this circle. I'm going to like pretend that I didn't even cut it and it wasn't the piece I sent. I went and got a new piece of that same mix in paper and cut myself another three by four piece. I don't know if that's cheating or not. I mean, I still use just the three by four piece, although later I do actually use that circle too. So I guess I did cheat in my own month just a tiny little bit. Sorry, girls. All right. So um, now that I've got everything down, including my flip flap for the right hand page, I'm ready to start thinking about the title and embellishments. Since I'm probably going to add a little bit of tri-blend marker coloring to my cute little birds from the stamp of the month, I'm going to go ahead and stamp those now in intense black ink so that way they have a little bit of time to really dry and set into the paper uh, before I add any of those markers to them. So I'm just pulling a couple of them and making sure that I have them looking in different directions so that way I have some options when I go to put them around my page. Um, but I'm just going to stamp a few using my Misty here. Um, I love this thing. I just got it a couple of months ago and I wish I would have had it for, for all of my years of crafting because it really is so wonderful. Um, it just makes it really easy, especially on these kind of detailed stamps to get a really nice crisp image. So I have gone ahead and fussy cut those birds out. And then I did use my Cricut to uh, cut out the word 16 in um, some black cardstock. And I cut it out three different times actually, and I've already glued some of them together. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and start adhering those layers together. Um, and then I also used my Slim Alphabet die cuts from Close to My Heart to cut out the word sweet. So the title will be Sweet 16, um, but I thought it would be fun to add just a little bit of ink blending behind where those letters are gonna go. So I kind of took note of how far over on the page it came, and then I'm gonna go just a little bit past that point. Uh, I am using Seabrook ink, which is a really light color, and you can't even really see it here on the video. I had a hard time even in person 
and kind of telling. Um, it took quite a few applications of, you know, blending to really get that wash of color back there, but that was fine. I did pick that color on purpose because I wanted it to be something really light and subtle, uh, which was exactly what it did. But it definitely took me quite a bit of time to build up just enough color to be able to see it behind those titles. So I'm not doing it across the full top of each page, but just behind where those letters will be. So I've gone ahead and adhered that down. Um, I kind of have my birds where I think I might want to put them. You can see I did add a little bit of coloring here. I used only two colors of my markers. I used the coral blends and the dull green blends. Um, and I didn't color everything and I just kind of did a few little dots and, and little swashes of color here and there. They are such detailed images that I didn't really want to do a full on color because I didn't have the patience for that. Um, and I'm also going to bring in a couple of stickers from my Cosette sticker sheet. So I have a couple of leaves and sprigs and flowers that I think I want coming out over this bird here. Uh, so it doesn't look like he's just kind of flying in the middle of nowhere, but those flowers and branches kind of give him a place to sit. Um, and I do have some foam tape uh, popped up behind him, but I don't have any of them stuck down just yet. And then I'm just looking through the stickers. I really like this one that has those um, red color, kind of orange poppy color or papaya colored uh, flowers. But before I stick that one down, I am going to do a little bit of stitching onto my circle. So I figure I should probably do that first before I get that sticker in the way. And what I'm gonna do is go back to my circle thin cuts and find the next smallest circle and use that as a guide. But when I did, I thought, you know what, that's kind of coming in just a little bit too much. So I found a different circle die cut that was just a little bit bigger uh, than that other one, but still smaller than my actual circle of paper. And I'm going to use that as a guide to poke my holes. Now on this one, I'm just kind of holding it in place while I use my piercing tool, but I did get smarter on my later circles and I drew a pencil and then went around with my, uh, with my piercing tool. And you can see here, I've just added uh, a regular back stitch with three strands of black embroidery thread all the way around all those circles. And now I can go ahead and start putting my, my birdies into place. I think that they are just so cute and the colors on them and the whimsicalness of them just kind of really goes along with these papers and the mix-in papers. Um, and even though this is like a page about turning 16 and, you know, very much like a teenager kind of thing, I really wanted to go with something that kind of had a little bit more of a vintage vibe uh, just because of the background of the photos. Um, we were in my sister-in-law's basement and so there's some really pretty woodwork back there and it just didn't feel like it was needing like, you know, neon colors and other kinds of things that are kind of, you know, young and hip and and teenager-ish. So uh, I thought the birds were perfect to complement the papers and the photos. So I'm just kind of playing with some of the stickers here and getting them layered up and behind uh, where some of those clusters are going to be. And that's pretty much it. Like it was really nice to kind of have those stickers. I didn't have to do any stamping or die cutting of like branches or leaves or anything. Um, I do like this little circle sticker that says smile. I'm going to add that up there to that top part. I think that's it for the stickers. So I'm going to turn it to my silver glitter gems and just sprinkle a few around the page. So I'm going to add them to each of the spots where my birds are. Um, and then also up here in this top spot, I do end up moving that first gem later, um, but I'm just going to kind of move them around and yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. It was a lot of fun to scrapbook this so soon after it happened because um, I, the memories are still fresh and I think it's going to be a lot easier to do my journaling. Uh, like most people, I am quite a few years behind in my scrapbooking and I do mostly scrapbook in chronological order. So yeah, it was kind of fun to do this, you know, shortly after the photos actually took place. So there you can see all of the still shots. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, this is part of the mystery envelope challenge that I do with my friends in the Makers with Heart group. And this month it was me to send out the papers and the rules and everybody is creating something with those same papers and rules and we all come up with something different. And it's fun because it's a surprise for us too. We don't know what we have made until we all release our videos 
on the 25th of the month. So it is just really neat to see how everybody's mind thinks differently and we come up with something that just looks, you know, totally different from each other's projects. So make sure that you check out those links in the description box down below. I will also leave links to any of the products that are currently available. Thank you so much for being here and watching today. I hope you guys feel inspired. All right. See you next time. Happy crafting. Bye.